Greetings, my people. Just imagine if we were united. Imagine if we were our brother's keeper. Imagine if your child was my child. Imagine if we still believe it takes a village to raise a child. Imagine if we protected each other from things that are happening all over around us. Imagine if our men protected our women. Imagine if our women protected our men. Imagine if our men and women protected the whole family. Imagine if we were one. Just imagine black unity. We are not saying black unity because we hate anybody else who is not black. We are saying black unity because now it is the time to concentrate on family. Family. Family comes first. Family comes first. If you are me and I am you and we are family, I come first. You come first. We all come first. Imagine if we looked out for one another. Imagine if we mentioned each other's names in positive spaces. Imagine if we shared all the positivity that is happening in our communities and nobody is talking about it. Imagine if we took the power back to our hands. Imagine, just imagine. Imagine how powerful we will be together. Because divided, we fall. Imagine so before i start this video i'm going to explain something especially because i got people from different countries on my platform colored is a term to describe multiracial or biracial people in southern africa i say southern africa because it doesn't only happen in south africa but also in namibia zimbabwe and swaziland so just to get that out there now we're clear this comment right here i'm going to need you to pack up or do some inner work because what you're not gonna do is show your anti-blackness especially on my page let me make this clear i have a colored father that's why my last name is kutz so i am very well aware about what happens in the colored community i personally don't believe that colored people can be racist but they are anti-black whether you like it or not black people are not racist they can be prejudiced not racist so let's start in the color community if you have fairer skin straight hair and malaysian type features you're upheld to a higher accord there's colorism in the color community the way you'll treat your fellow black passing color is how you treat black people so a lot of you guys have asked what i meant when i said that really really rich white people see black immigrants different from black americans and i usually stick to my own experience which involves that ultra upper class that secretive class but i think this one actually applies to a lot of white people across the board the reason why they treat them differently, well, there's a couple of reasons. Number one, black immigrants absolve white people of slavery guilt. I hope that makes sense. It, they absolve white people of slavery guilt. Slavery is a touchy thing in the white community, as we all know, but they all know it happened. And when they deal with black immigrants, they don't have to deal with that uncomfortability or that guilt that comes with it. Uh, number two, they feel like black Americans, the reason why they are where they are today is because of themselves. You're in America. White privilege doesn't exist, although a lot of them know it does. But the white privilege doesn't exist. You should be here by now. But you guys are just lazy and just want handouts, right? They feel like black Americans are not as deserving. Also, and you do notice in a lot of companies like Microsoft, Amazon, there's a lot of Indians. There's a lot of Africans that get hired on. And HR people will tell you it's because they work so hard. You know, their parents, they came from such a, they work so hard. What they mean is that they're more humble. And they're not quite going, they're not going to challenge the white superiority as much as a black American would. And you have to understand, these people think that Iran is huts and India is completely undeveloped and Africa is all one place and everybody's in the mud. Right? And oftentimes we find black immigrants really struggle or even sometimes push back when black Americans talk about their struggles and the way they're treated. They'll always say, well, that wasn't my way. Well, of course it wasn't your way because they didn't 
that wasn't your experience because they didn't treat you like that because you were more deserving. And the point is, it's this typical white behavior and gatekeeping behavior of who deserves what. They deserve it because, you know, they're from such a poor place and they're so humble. Black Americans don't deserve it because of all of these things. But the point is, the group of people who is deciding who deserves it is white people. And we see it all the time with white allies. I'm only going to be your ally if you're nice to me. This is, you know, not new. And so I, and, it, and let me just preference this by saying, everybody's experience is different. There, I'm sure there are a lot of black immigrants out there that really understand and respect and are sensitive to the issues that black Americans face. But then there are a lot that aren't, and that's what I'm talking about. So it's important for people to understand, especially black immigrants, that if your experience is different and white people are kinder to you, it's not because you're special. It's because you make them feel better about their racism and white privilege and white supremacist behaviors. Kenyans, here is the colonial legacy that you inherited from the white man. When slave trade began in the 15th century, captured Africans were forced to cut their hair as a way to humiliate them. They knew how much Africans valued their hair. The colonizers would touch the African hair and say African hair feels like pubic hair or African hair is dirty. Shaving Africans was the colonizers way of depriving them of their identity and having them forget their culture. All missionary schools required African children to shave and with time shaving in Africa became a culture. During the Mau Mau rebellion, African men and women decided to rebel by growing their hair. An act that was dreaded by the white man, to the point anyone that had dreadlocks was killed on the spot. Hence the name dreadlocks. This created stigma around dreadlocks that African parents still associate dreadlocks with the criminal activities. Up to today, there are jobs and schools that do not take in black children and black people with dreadlocks. Okay, so I am officially post banned from TikTok for the next few days because people got upset that I said full lips is a black woman's feature. Y'all, I remember there was a time where we would get bullied, harassed, ridiculed. Our features were considered to be ugly. And let me make myself clear, more than anybody, dark skinned black women. Um, I've definitely had my share of discrimination for my facial features and my hair texture or whatever, but more than anything, what dark skinned women went through for, you know, having big breasts and big butt, thick thighs and full lips. Um, I remember when, when we were always the butt of the joke, we were a mockery, it was unattractive. You know what I'm saying? And it's just crazy because what I realized is a white woman is considered to be the beauty standard only after she purchases our features and it's crazy to me how they are so desperate to play the oppression olympic it's like they're so desperate to be victim they're, they're so desperate for racism to affect them too even though they know it doesn't that i can literally say anything and they'll call it racist i said full lips are a black woman's facial features oh my god you're racist i'm all kind of nappy headed skinny porch monkey my dms i'm getting called all kind of b's and h's somebody got so mad that they even took it to the extent of threatening my daughter. They don't want to know about the history behind us getting mocked for our natural hair, our natural facial features, you know, as if they don't know the history behind Sarah Bartman. I can go on and on and on. It's either they don't know or they don't want to know or they don't care. It's just a matter of I'm entitled. What I want is what I want. And, and for you to sit there and make claims to it, you're a racist, how dare you? <laughs> Baby, look, I said what I said. If you are saying that you are Latina and you got full lips, it's because you're Afro-Latina, okay? If you're saying that you're white and you have full lips, it's because you got fillers. And if your lips aren't thin, that does not necessarily mean that they're full to the extent of what a natural black woman's full lips are. Sorry if that hurts. Hell is not real. Killmonger said, bury me in the oceans where my ancestors jumped from the ships because they knew death was better than bondage. Colonizers made up hell to make slaves fear death. If I can make you fear death and I have the power to kill you, there's nothing you won't do for me. 
That's the only explanation of how so many generations of our people would even be subject to such cruel conditions. But even on the more logical side, I think we can all agree that we have a physical body and then we have an intangible soul. How can you burn a soul? But let's take it one more step further. If Jesus died for my sins for all time, how can I still go to hell for those sins that he just died for? This comment threw me off. Cause I'm not narcissistic. I don't think that I'm better than anybody. But do people ever stop to think that maybe the reason why so many dark skinned women seem or have confidence is because we're trying to overcompensate for the way that people treat us? Like literally, I tell myself that I'm the most beautiful woman that's ever existed, right? But I still don't think that I'm better than anybody. The only reason why I do that is to force myself to believe it. Because I've gone through so much stuff because of my skin complexion, and I still do to this day. I can't go out in public without someone laughing at me. I can't go out in public without somebody mentioning it to, to their friends. So of course, I'm gonna call myself beautiful. Of course, in response to the other person saying, I wish I had your confidence, I'm gonna say, it's yes, what happens when you're from Because I'm gonna force myself to believe it so I don't get a mental breakdown because of people like you who so kiss my hand. So I'm excited. This is specifically for black South Africans, but every black person will benefit from this. I promise. Especially all Bantu speaking people and Africans in the diaspora that have found out that they actually have Bantu ancestry within them. Guys, I'm excited to share. But here's the thing, it's gonna be a series because it's way too long to put into just three minutes. So I'm gonna need your full cooperation. It'll be better if people actually say requesting part one, requesting part two, etc. right? So that whoever does find the series can always go back to where it began. Let me just give you a glimpse. At last, she had found a place untouched by white hands. I had to throw that in there. This is gonna blow your mind. They would eventually collect all the proof she needed. Conclusion, ancient Bantu people had built Great Zimbabwe in medieval times, starting around the 11th century. Period. Let the games begin. What trips me out in a black family, they quaint to label motherfuckers as being the black sheep. The black sheep is normally the ones that don't take no shit and fuck with nobody and don't give a damn. Normally, that's the most independent motherfucker that don't need or want for a motherfucking thing from nobody. Yes, that individual has went through some downfall, but that one individual has came to fuck up without the motherfuckers that was talking that shit about them. And it's always that family that's putting on for the city, that's in the church, oh Lord, hallelujah. Oh Lord, they running for all kind of positions and all kind of shit. They trying to start fun for the city and all. But meanwhile, they hold the deepest and darkest motherfucking secrets. And they know if they come fucking with you, you will run it down on they bitch ass and not giving a fuck about what the fuck it is they running for. <laughs> Hey, so I got an idea. So I see there's a lot of confusion between black people right now. You know, many people feeling kind of rejected by African Americans keeping Tutnese away from them. You know, once I understood that it was a secret language, it made sense why it's crucial to keep it within themselves. Now, I personally don't feel like it's my conversation to have, but what I do know is that us as Africans have more than 2,000 languages in our continent alone. Some of us come from countries where we have 11 to 13 official languages. We're already fluent in multiple tongues. We can let them have their language without feeling some type of way. But what I will encourage you as an African person, since the African Union is already trying to unite all 54 of our countries, how about we start learning each other's languages? No, I mean, let's start learning languages from other African countries. There's many of us on this app already. Let's get intertwined. Mbote, I've started learning Lingala and Chichewa, Ndima Kukonda, to all of y'all. 
The descendants of colonizers are getting mad for being called the colonizer while descendants of slaves are still being treated like slaves. They say things like, I wasn't there, you can't blame me for the sins of my ancestors, I had nothing to do with slavery. White people want to dissociate from all the cruelty of their ancestors apart from the part where they rip off the benefits of systemic racism standards set by their ancestors. They are still upholding the laws their ancestors lived by, still hiding the stolen gold and history of Africa, while slave descendants are still locked up behind prison doors, others getting shot aimlessly on the street. Slavery never ended. The name just got changed into capitalism. Then you tell the Negro to forgive and forget, yet no apologies are being made. So forgive what? All systems of oppression are still up and running. So no, the colonizer is not sorry. They're just uncomfortable because they'd rather we shut up.